Chop it, they experts. That's right. <laughs> Not seeing us on there just yet. Chop it. Should be coming up. It says it's starting. Starting. Mm-hmm. All right. Try one more. One more again. One more again. Mira, chop it. Mira, chop it. Te quiero mucho. Te quiero mucho. Chop it. Chop it. Chop it. You should have it. Mm-mm. Do you like chapetes? We don't. We don't. <laughs> but we're here to talk about them. But we tolerate them. More tolerant of them than they are of us. Facts. Chapete. <laughs> Testimony tilt. Oh, that's because that was the original name. I said it to plug okay. something in there. Yeah. Testimony tilt. Oh, all right. It's super, like, BC. Here we go. You are now listening to This is what democracy looks like. Are you lonely? I am. Do you have no friends? Nope. It's because you're on the right. Oh, there you try. You've got no friends. None. Not in this uh, liberal, crazy world we live in. Except for my dog. Anyways. Welcome to This Is What Democracy Looks Like. Mm. This is what it looks like. With David and Los. Yes. What's up? I am David. I'm Los. Ooh. That's right. We are going to try starting something new here. Uh, it's a new pod where we're going to be more on the confirmation bias of things. Yes. We're going to confirm your bias on this. So much that uh, we're just gonna we're gonna talk about just a lot of politics and um, being on the right and uh, not trying to always try to find common ground with yeah. with, with you know be civil. We don't want to always be civil, but not it's not fun being civil. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? No, no, it sounds like an alt right podcast. That's true. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I gotta watch what I say. I guess. No, being civil is great, but. Um, there's a reason why we're on the right, mm-hmm. and so we're going to talk about those things, and it's 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 a crazy world, and we're we it's we didn't we weren't always on the right. No, no, yeah, it's one of those things where you know I I can every time I meet people who are on the left or who are heavy Democrats, I'm like, dude, I know exactly like where you're at and why you're there, and it doesn't make any sense, at least not anymore. Well, it made me wonder how I got onto the right i mean it's because i was i didn't know much about politics and when i was i thought i was going to be you know definitely not a republican yep yep and so when i realized and you start looking into it they sort of align my at least my values align with libertarian values and i I identified a lot by that and i didn't agree with what the climate's being changed not the climate changing but the actual (laughs) political climate changing where you know you couldn't say certain words mm-hmm. anymore. I realized that people that don't want you to say a certain word, like the N word, mm-hmm. are the people that are going to use it themselves. And we're talking, I mean, you know, like I was with a I had a black friend over, and I said this on my other show. Um, I had a black friend over once, mm-hmm. and we were doing some cooking, you know, <laughs> the good stuff. And we got into the word, and I said I wouldn't use the word, man, but because mm-hmm. he uses it a lot. And I'm like, but. If you can say it, I should be able to say it. He goes, no, you, as a white person, which uh, I'm like, dude, I'm Carlos. Okay, I don't know where you get the white person <laughs> thing from. Um, you know, Michael Jackson was white. Yeah. Shit. I mean. Wait, was he white? <laughs> but he was he, at the he end. He told me that I couldn't use that word. And I said, I wouldn't use that word, but is it okay for you to say it? He mm-hmm. goes, yeah. And, but it's not okay for me to say it, even though I would never use it. Mm-hmm. And I, he was definitely against it. He got so mad that he left. He, like, just what? stormed out and got a taxi and bailed out. Damn, how long ago was this? Some, I feel like I'm a little little heavy on the game there. There you go. Uh, maybe a little up a little more. There you go. Uh, but it made me start to realize that people didn't like certain words. Mm-hmm. And there was another example. I was in a band where uh, there was three, uh, two, uh, two black guys. You know, I don't, I'm not racist. Mm-hmm. You know? I enjoy... Reggae music made by the black man. Yes. I culturally appropriate their music. <laughs> Every now and then we're some dreadlocks. Uh, yeah, it's on my <laughs> jaw, and I praise Hel Celestia yep. first. Every time I get Ethiopian uh, coffee Damn. at work, I'm like, I'm going to get Irie on this Ethiopian coffee, man. You're like riding near the beach. Bye. Hey, boy. 
Um, but yeah, they I I had posted up this thing that had the word Migas, like a chalkboard uh, mm-hmm. in front of a place, and it said Migas. And I found this little stick, and I covered up the I covered up one of the sides in, of the N of the M, and it made yes. Migas. And I was like, man, I can go for some good Migas right now. <laughs> That's a um, good one. They posted it up on our group me, our separate group me, and they said, you know, the uh, the black one of the black guys in the band, he got super fucking angry at me, called me white privilege racist. What? And I told him it was just a joke, man. Like, wh- what? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, man, yeah, I don't have friends. What do you think like I'm that. doing here? Do you think I'm being racist or something? I just saw it was a funny word. And, yeah. And, you know, he's someone that definitely probably wouldn't use that word. I don't think, but. Wasn't even the word. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and to me, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I've had people call me a lot of racial things, and I, at the end of the day, like, don't really care because I'm like, damn I'm, wet I'm, back. Yeah, yeah, like they'll, they'll say wet, wet back, and you know, be like, go back Pinchy to the chapete. border, chapete, you know what I mean? Like, so they say those things to me, and at the end of the day, I'm just like, they're just words, like you know, like back in the day when I grew up, it was sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me, and now I feel like it's flipped the script, like words can hurt. I'm like, no, like. You can't hurt me with what you say. You can call me whatever you want. You can throw any slur at me, and I'll just be fine. Because it's like, well, I know I'm not those things, so why am I going to let that affect me? Yeah, you know? short of saying, like, I, I wanna, I'm going to kill you and shit, like, we're, we're totally fine with words. Yeah, I don't mind words at all. I love words. But no, people are so afraid of words. They say that they're, they incite. Oh, they incite violence? If you disagree with them, you're, you're inciting violence on them somehow. I don't get it. So... I wanted to go first. We got to go to our chapete of mm. the mu- of the week here. Chapete, 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 chapete. So A O C, the queen, the queen chapete. Like Beyonce is a queen B. She's a queen chap. Why? Why is AOC so not like not even by Democrats you know Nancy Pelosi is always yeah. n- nasty Pelosi's like Mark Dice is so nasty funny Pelosi <laughs> yeah Mark Dice always has great <laughs> nicknames for everybody um, she's she's not even into AOC calls her like you know she's only got five people in oh her. yeah uh, anyone would have won still, still talking shit <laughs> anyone would have won that seat that she won this this glass, oh, of, yeah, water the glass of water glass of water with a D in with front, of, D its in front name. of it you know uh, she she was probably right and. Once they see all this crap is crap, mm-hmm. she's out in one year after uh, Trump wins again. Man, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great, I tell you. So she had this message from the future, which was absolutely crazy, where she talks about how great she is now in the future. She's like, I'm President fucking Chapete here. Did she, try to, did she start it off like Wayne's World? <laughs> Let's uh, watch this message from the future with Alexandra Casio Chapete. Ah, the bullet train from New York to DC. It always brings me back to when I first started making this commute. In 2019, I was a freshman in the most diverse Congress in history. Up to that point, it was a critical time. I'll never forget the children in our community. They were so inspired to see this new class of politicians who reflected them navigating the halls of power. It's often said, you can't be what you can't see. And for the first time, they saw themselves. I think there was something similar with the Green New Deal. We knew that we needed to save the planet and that we had all the technology to do it, but people were scared. They said it was too big, too fast, not practical. I think that's because they just couldn't picture it yet. Anyways, I'm Stop getting ahead second. of myself. Let's start with how we got here. 1977, it, New York. Yeah, it's, it's so most diverse in history, which is absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a lot more women that ran. So yeah. just keep that and it's going to just keep going more and more and more. You know, it's just because uh, women feel empowered because Trump's in office. I mean, thank Trump. I mean, for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's very true. Are we, are we, I don't think he's the greatest man in the whole fucking world, but no. because of, and I, I've said this to people, you're going to look back in 25 years and people say that it's going to be, oh, we're going to see he's the worst one. I, I, I disagree. Mm-hmm. Yep. He got so many people involved in politics again. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing, like what she's saying about like kids being into politics right now. Like, I don't think four years old four-year-old kids and seven-year-old kids are looking at AOC and be like, oh my gosh, I want to be like her when I grow oh yeah, up. But they'll, they'll totally use them as pawns yep. to go to the fucking uh, congresswoman's exactly. fucking office and, and go, read. 
oh, but uh, leading scientists are saying <laughs> if we don't change the world in 12 years, we're going to die. We're going to die. Like, and we just played a clip from Cory Booker saying, you know, we shouldn't listen to any fear-mongering from any yeah. of these uh, politicians. And it applies to your side, too. Exactly. And this is what it's all about. Keep on playing that. A senior scientist named James Black made a presentation Racist. about how Racist. burning fossil fuels could eventually lead to James global African temperatures American. rising four or black. five degrees Fahrenheit. Within two years, one of the world's biggest super tankers was outfitted with a state-of-the-art lab to measure CO2 in the ocean, gathering more data about global warming. Guess who was doing all of this research? Exxon Mobil, the oil and gas company. Oh yeah. Exxon knew oh, yeah. this whole time, as guys. did our politicians. <laughs> White guys must Ten years like later, James Hansen, guys. NASA's top climate scientist, told Congress he was 99% certain that global warming was happening and caused by humans. Why that was 1988, <laughs> the year before really I was even born. So did Exxon listen to the science, including their own? Did they change business models, invest in renewables? No, the opposite. They knew and they doubled down. They and others spent millions setting up a network of lobby groups and think tanks to create doubt and denial about climate change. It was an effort designed to attack and dispute the very kind of science they themselves had been doing. And it worked. Politicians went to bat for fossil fuels for and these massive- so talking about how, how the fat cats are, you know, telling everybody that, oh no, it's, it's fake and mm -hmm. they're putting money into it. Meanwhile, what did they gain? They're making a lot of money off of this stuff already. Let's yeah. say that these fat cats, you know, actually are those fat guys there too. The bald dude, you know, he's keeping, he's case. making money. But how much more money do you think it's going to cost to, to have land, acquire all this land for mm -hmm. all the windmills and the solar, um, the bullet trains she wants, uh, where, it, you know, bullet trains can't just, they go super fast. Yes. They can't curve very much. So they'd have very to get dangerous. land that goes straight across. Now, there's a lot of private land there. What are they going to do? Seize it? Are they going to compensate the, you know, what are they going to do? No one's going to want a fucking bullet train going yeah. across their property. So and I mean, if they're taking money from hardworking people, I'm pretty sure they're going to take land from hardworking people. Yeah, absolutely. And she's using f government force to get what she wants. Um, so meanwhile, these fat cats have all this money. But who's going to make more money if they have to go global, I mean, solar and, and you know, renewable uh, windmills and shit? Yeah. Well, and, and at the end of the day, she's walking down the path of becoming a fat cat. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like that, is, that's what the Democrats want. They're so exactly. fucking jelly. Yeah, they're like, oh, well, we don't want you to have it, but we want it. But then they'll tell you, oh, no, we're not, we're not rich or anything. They lied to you. They'll say this one thing and then not the other face. They say that. I know Bernie Sanders, it's not my fault that I wrote a book and that made me a millionaire. Hey. I wrote a book. <laughs> and if you write a book, you can be a millionaire too. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? Okay. Fucking Uncle Bernie. So you're saying that if I work hard, I'm going to make a million dollars, you know, when I write a book? You'll write a book. You, it, I don't want them to pay the, I want them to pay the fair share. <laughs> well, it's the it, And the thing is, and well, I pay 26%. And, it, and it's uh, like, you know, Steve Jobs, it's like, well, it's not my fault that my invention made me a billionaire. You know, same thing with Bill Gates and all these guys. It's like the effort that, you know, your old ass took to put that, to write a book, they put more effort in making products that made them billionaires. You know what I mean? So how is it okay for you to be a millionaire off of a book and other people can't be millionaires off of inventions? Uh, yeah, well, oh, couldn't have said it any better. Let's keep playing from this. Corporations <laughs> kept digging and mining, drilling and fracking like there was no tomorrow. America became the biggest producer and consumer of oil in the world. Fossil fuel companies made hundreds of billions while the public paid the lion's share to clean up their disasters. We lost a generation of time we'll never get back. Entire species will never get back. Natural wonders gone forever. And in 2017, Hurricane Maria destroyed the place where my family was from, Puerto Rico. It was like a climate bomb. It took as many American lives as 9-11. And in the next year, when I was elected to Congress, the world's leading climate scientists declared another emergency. They told us that we had 12 years left to cut our emissions in half, or hundreds of millions of people would be more likely to face food and water shortages, poverty, and death. 12 years to change 
everything. How we got around, how we fed ourselves, how we made our stuff, how we lived and worked, everything. The only way to do it was to transform our economy, which we already knew was broken since the vast majority of wealth was going to just a small handful of people and most folks were falling further and further behind. It was a true turning point. Oh, and Whoa, lots of people gave people up. On top they still. said we were doomed. But some of us remembered that as a nation, we'd been in peril before. The Great Depression, World War II. We knew from our history how to pull together to overcome impossible odds. And at the very least, we owed it to our children to try. The wave began when Democrats took back the House in 2018, and then the Senate and the White House in 2020 and launched the decade of the Green New Deal, a flurry of legislation that well, kicked off our social and ecological and transformation to ever. save the planet. It was the kind of swing for the fence ambition we needed. Finally, we were entertaining solutions on the scale of the crises we faced really? without leaving anyone behind. Anyone that included like Medicare for All, the most popular social program in American history. Is it really? We also introduced the federal jobs guarantee, a public option including dignified living wages for work. <laughs> Funnily <laughs> enough, the biggest problem in those early years was a labor shortage. We were building a national smart grid, retrofitting every building in America, putting trains like this one all across the country. We needed more workers. That group of kids from my neighborhood were right in the middle of it all, especially this one girl, Ileana. Her first job out of college was with AmeriCorps Climate, restoring wetlands and bayous in coastal Louisiana. Most of her friends were in her union, including some oil workers in transition. They took apart old pipelines and got to work planting mangroves with the same salary and benefits. Of course, when it came to healing the land, we had huge gaps in our knowledge. Luckily, indigenous communities offered generational expertise to help guide the way. Ileana got restless, tried her hand as a solar plant engineer for a while, but eventually made her career in raising the next generation as part of the Universal Child Care Initiative. As it turns out, caring for others is valuable, low-carbon work. And we started paying real money. It's Chapete at her finest. Well, I feel like she's just making it seem like, oh, this is what the problem was, and this is how we fixed it. Look how easy it was. And it's like, no, like you're in a fit every building in the United Sta States of America with solar energy. Unbelievable, and it's not gonna work. What in the world? Like, come well, on. Well, you know, we thought going to the moon was gonna be impossible, but look what we did. That's true, we staged it. Well, anyways, <laughs> let's keep moving on with the chapete thing. Uh, but first of all, there's some chapetes uh -oh. that did something terrible. So it seems like some people that did something yes. terrible Those. Over I the wish weekend. I wish I knew who they were. Well. There are some people that speculate, and at least I think the government there uh, said, has claimed somebody did it. Um, one thing is for sure, if you talk to the Democrats, you know, it definitely wasn't anybody that did it. Because <laughs> it seems that if it has anything to do with Christians, and of course we're talking about what happened in Sri Lanka, yes. where um, something like 290 people were, were, hit, were killed, death toll in Sri Lanka is soared to over uh, 290 after a wave of blasts at wow. churches and luxury hotels across the country on Saturday. Police said 24 people have been arrested, but it is not yet known who carried out the attacks, which is true. About 500 people are injured and at least 35 foreigners are among the dead, coming from BBC. 24 people. Unbelievable, right? Man. But so w that's just and that's all Christians, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Christians. Well, just looking at the, the luxury hotel part. I don't know about that. Um, who's in there? Mm -hmm. But somebody doesn't like the Christians lately. Well, yeah, and that was something that I was afraid of, like even going into the Easter holiday. I was just thinking to myself, like, man, I bet you somebody's going to do something because it's like, you know, I think so. yeah, because it's like that's, you know, it's one of the, you know, other than, of course, Christmas and whatever holiday people go to church for. Um, I was going to say New Year's, but I don't think people go to church for New Year's. Um, but yeah, you yeah, know, it's, you? They it's probably have a New Year's service. Yeah, Why not but, but they, keep you, you from going out? Right, to keep you sober. But um, but yeah, like, that's one of the times that Christians f or people flood the church the most. You know, whether you're a Christian or not, 
It's like tradition. They know that that's smart of somebody. They know that there's going to be a lot of people at a church. Exactly. If you, you want to do something terrible. Exactly. You shouldn't give anybody any ideas on this show. What's your problem? What's well, your, I mean. You're Chapete of the Week now. Hey, look. No. You got you to gotta think the way they think. You do. <laughs> if you want to you stop them. Um, so not too long ago, like a little under a month ago or, or about a month ago, mm -hmm. they had the church. The Christchurch. Uh, Christ, uh, Christchurch yep. shooting in New Zealand, which was pretty goddamn bad. And so you have people like AOC, everyone on the left, saying we must stop white supremacy. Yes. Because obviously he had said something or another to be provocative and say that he was this and that, but he really aligned with the Republic of China's mm -hmm. fucking uh, economy or uh, political stance. And, of course, he, meant he mentioned the biggest white supremacist of all, PewDiePie. Uh, yeah, and, and he said, <laughs> subscribe to PewDiePie. And he said, can you go to this, uh, this guy right here? Um, so we're going to read AOC's uh, tweet the about tweeter. Alexandra's tweet about Christchurch, and this is what she said. All of these are terrorist incidents. We have a responsibility to understand and how white supremacy uh, plus online radicalization works because it is impacting our entire society. President so Trump defunded federal programs designed to fight the spread of white supremacist hate groups. And this is in the response of the Christchurch Mosque, mm -hmm. white supremacists. We got to fucking, uh, we got to get rid of and fight the spread of white supremacist hate groups because of this terrorist Is act. it really that big? What? White supremacy? I, I don't think so. Me but neither. See, people see, this, the, because they see it everywhere. There is an article, I wish I can cite it, but what um, they were talking about was um, everything that everybody does if you're going to investigate where the roots of it come from, you start with the racist part, and mm -hmm. then you try to find your confirmation bias to confirm that. That's sort of what's going on. They're talking about how someone didn't get served or someone got served too quickly because you wanted, you didn't like the person mm -hmm. because of their color of their skin, so you got them out of there. Or maybe you're just a, a fast registered guy, you know, <laughs> but no, it goes straight to racism or why you, you, you serve somebody a lot faster, mm. uh, a lot slower. Because yeah. you know uh, you like them, yeah. Because they're white, you know. There's racism in everything, and that's sort of what's going on with white supremacists. There, they're saying, "Oh no, white supremacy! That's a that's a tool of white supremacists." Mm -hmm. I just read uh, fucking cop uh, people with dogs. Dogs are a gateway to white supremacy because they seek out territory. Dogs do. You know that's kind of true. My my <laughs> my German Shepherd doesn't <laughs> like uh, Asian people. Yeah, well, yeah. For whatever reason. He's like, hey! And then, well, hey, hey! Well, he's from Germany. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, doy. <laughs> um, but so we're trying to get that racism out of her. Let's go to another tweet. Um, there's uh, Miss Hillary Clinton's tweet Man. Um, about Sri Lanka. Or, no, Christchurch. I wanted to get that one first. Yeah, the mm -hmm. bottom one is Christchurch here. My heart breaks for New Zealand and the Mus global Muslim community. We must continue to fight the... We gotta do it more in like gotta, a southern. Yeah, I was gonna say you should do that. My so heart breaks for New mm. Zealand and the global Muslim community. Yeah, we must continue to fight the perpetration <laughs> <laughs> and normalization of Islamophobia and racism in all its forms. White supremacist terrorists must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Their murderous hatred must be stopped. And you got hot sauce for this look chicken? He, they, look here, Reverend. <laughs> You would bring up something <laughs> funny, Revlin. There ain't nothing wrong <laughs> with white supremacist terrorists. <laughs> they ain't on the rise. I'm lying, of course. <laughs> I'm Hillary Clinton. They're everywhere. Haven't you seen them? Man. Oh, how, Jesus, Murphy. How is Hillary not in jail? I don't know. Because of uh, Comey. Uh, that's why. That's so true. she says this. White supremacist groups must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, she knows because of some guy that claimed that he was white supremacist, and he could have been. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to defend white supremacists anywhere. I think white supremacists are evil people wherever they are, but they're not as they're not as prevalent as everyone is saying. Yeah. But I hate them as much as any of you guys hate them. I just don't see it as far where you all see it. And this is coming from two yeah. people of color here, POCs, oh, shit, people of Chapete. Like I have tattoos. <laughs> I was gonna do this, but that's Hitler. Oh, take um, it easy, dude. <laughs> fucking take it down. What's, what's what's like a what's like a color? We should come up with a colored sign. A colored sign. Like when colored people see each other, it's like. Uharu. Color. 
Color. Color. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Color. You Color. can get Cardi B with it. Color. 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 <laughs> All right. So obviously they really hated that um, white supremacists did this. Yes. So let's go to Hillary's tweet about Sri Lanka. I'm sure it's it's almost the same. Do you have a? Uh, oh, that. that uh, not oh Jesus! So I'm looking for the Sri Lanka. Did I not save that one? They're the, they're the same ones. Um, actually, just go to her, go to her um, Twitter, and it's like the one of the first ones because mm-hmm. it just happened over the weekend. So let's see what she's got to say about Sri yeah. Lanka. I guess I didn't put the right. I definitely didn't. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Sri, like Sriracha. 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 Sriracha's got the word uh, S R I in the beginning there. Sri. Um, yeah, well, tell us something real quick while he looks us up. Yeah, but, uh, you know, even when I was reading her tweet, it was, uh, yeah, my response is just kind of like, really? Like, how, like There it is. On this, uh, on this holy weekend for many faiths, we must uh, stand united. Oh, wait. On this holy weekend for many faiths, reverend. We must stand get, uh, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka. Easter worshipers, yep. um, are they uh, who celebrates Easter? Uh, they worship the Easter Bunny, apparently. Uh, yeah, do, do they go over there and they're like, they, we got Easter worshipers. Yeah, travels. they're they're going to church and the pastor's being like, and Jesus, is like, yeah, yeah, where's where's the Easter Bunny? That's who we came to see. Is it so hard to say Christmas? I mean, Chris, <laughs> uh, uh, cr- Christians yeah. and Christmas? No, it's a uh, Christ worshippers, yep. Easter worshippers, holiday worshippers, worshippers. I'm praying like for everyone. Sauce. It's like we don't call Muslims five times a day prayers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how it goes. Um, but anyways, we've got a thing from the Pew Research Center that gave harassment on most religious groups increases uh, increases in 2016. So if you go down a little bit, it'll give you this little graph if you go down some more. It's the most important graph that I want to see. There it is. So you'll see the number of countries where religious groups were harassed by year. You've got from 07, Christians have just been in the lead. But, you know, it's by ones or twos or fives or tens. But Christians there, it's a, it, a lot of harassment on uh, both sides there. Yeah. So one really advocates for the, the Muslim side, and we're talking about uh, the left. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with a lot of the Muslims. There's just a really radical side of uh, Muslims, of, Isla- of people of Islam, that commit some horrendous some things. Some heinous crimes. Well, the, the most thing. heinous crimes. Yeah, so in the way I see it again, like... I always tell people, you know, you have your you have your crazy people in your family line. You know, there's uncles in my generation or my family where I'm like, eh, we don't really talk about those. But when you look at radical Christians, they're not the ones out there really killing people and doing like, yeah, they'll probably do like the gay bashing and the signs. And you know, it's more like you know they they try to protest protest things. That's extreme Christianity that I've seen. But when it comes to extreme Muslims, that's the yeah, well, I've said this once to a friend of mine. I say, would you rather be locked up in a room with an extreme Christian or extreme Muslim? Mm-hmm. You tell me which one you'd rather have. One of them will kill you. Another <laughs> one will say, hey, what, this is what's wrong with killing. Yeah, it's exactly. this book. Um, but that's, that's the far extreme mm-hmm. of both of those exactly. sides. And as you can see, and this is from Pew Re- uh, Research Center, and some lefts will go, oh, it's biased. And yeah, it probably is. Who knows? But the facts don't care about your fucking bias. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> That's my own uh, saying right there. I came it up. I came up with it by myself there. <laughs> Facts don't care about your bias. <laughs> so, and it's weird. And you know what? Um, is Islan Omar, Ihan Omar, uh, 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 Alexandra Casio Chapete? She has been silent on this. You can look at her uh, Twitter, and she said nothing about it so far. Obama said uh, same thing. Said uh, what? Uh, Easter worshippers. Easter worshippers. Okay. So did I think CNN or some other news broadcasting said Easter worshippers also. And why not? And why not have? And uh, why not talk about? We need to stop this extremism. Mm-hmm. But they said they were no problem jumping on white supremacy. But where they are to be at for this? That's this was way true. more heinous than 
then uh, way more people involved. When do we have a crazy extremist right or you know just a crazy guy mm -hmm. killing more than 250 people yeah. in a night? And this was a coordinated attack where they all did their body vests fucking all at yeah. the same time. It is crazy coordinated and somebody's up to it. Yeah, and it's something that you see again like you see this and you know death are just bad. People killing people is just bad, right? Terrible. But, so when you see the Christ Church you you hope for the same kind of sympathy or same kind of like um like you know speaking and stuff right you want people to be vocal about this tragedy just like you were at christ church yeah and how like you said like there's so many people being silent about it because they know that it's muslims they know that these are like muslim terrorists doing crazy things i, I sort of believe that that they know what happened they're like fuck man yep it, and it's like when you lose sometimes you, you're like all right man fucking stop it already let's just move on and with the kind of new cycle we have this is going to go away real quick yeah we're seeing this up uh, uptick in churches being destroyed, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe not Notre Dame for that reason, but who knows? Apparently, I heard somewhere that the architect, um, uh, that uh, he said that it looked like uh, arson. Oh, really? Like the, the architect that was like looking at the building and all that well, said that no, it looked like arson. He's no investigator. He's just the guy who built it. Um, is this doing that? Testing. Sorry, everyone Sounds out good. there. Sounds good. Leave it alone. <laughs> All right. So, we, I, like I said, it's weird when this happens to Christians and folks on the left either say nothing about it or, you know, they don't say condemn mm -hmm. exo ex uh, Islamic hatred. and Yeah, they just... They say and, uh, Islam Islamic hatred, but they don't say Islamic extremist hatred. Yeah. We need to accept that. And they have no problem fucking saying white supremacy. No, they pussyfoot around the topic when it comes to that. And they're just like, oh, yeah. It's pretty gross. And like I said, Miss Chapete herself, she mm. said nothing about it. It just shows you guys are not you out there, but <laughs> it shows that Chapete. And I'm talking to her because she listens to this. I, obviously. Yeah, it's w I actually, actually, it's one of her favorite podcasts. Yeah, she's like, I want to listen <laughs> to my favorite podcast. This is what democracy looks like. She's like, because they're my homies. They, they, hey. <laughs> They ain't nothing wrong with being a homie. <laughs> so, like, they buy me tacos. Reverend, I like what you said there. Now, I got something to say, too. Girl. <laughs> look. Look here, my G. <laughs> girl, we're going to get our nails did. We're going to party. <laughs> we're going to party today. Dude, you got furties? We got some furties. <laughs> we're going to purdy and get our nails did. We're going to get some Chapete. chimichangas. Chapete out. <sighs> I feel like that's the way she hangs her phone up. So, Chapete out. Obviously, this was another case of somebody doing something, mm. and that's that's Ilhan Omar for you there too. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to some funny stuff here. I found this bizarre cuckolding story. Ooh, the smoking gun. April sixteenth, an Arizona couple is charged with luring a day laborer to their Phoenix home and forcing a man to have sex at gunpoint with the female suspect. What? An assault that the male suspect described as a quote sexual fantasy scenario according to a criminal complaint and this comes from the smoking gun it's a hilarious story here according to the investigators the victim was picked up last monday outside a home depot by brenda Acuna aguero oh is that how you say that aguero yeah aguero aguero see i, I yeah. said it right i aguero. got the aguero yeah uh, 39 damn she's a old looking 40 year old yeah there, for real who said that she needed help moving items at her home the victim told cops that when he reached the residence, Acuna Aguero began to talk sexual to him. Mm. And it was, quote, her sexual fantasy to have sex with a laborer and that she wanted to have sex with him. Oh, yeah. She oh, was man. like, oh, you got that wood for me, honey? <laughs> <laughs> you got that wood? Come on over here. $20. $20, boy. When the man declined to have sex, oh, Acuna Aguero's husband, Jorge Murrieta, Venezuela, Damn. 45, entered the room carrying a rifle. <laughs> Murrieta, Venezuela, uh, cops charged, placed the firearm against the victim's chest and told him that he was, quote, he was going to have sex with my wife or he would shoot him. So he's like, you were going to fuck my wife. Because I don't want to do it. Can you do like a Mexican <laughs> countryman? I don't want to fuck. <laughs> Man, I tell you who. <laughs> He's definitely someone that's fucked up. That was he. He was going to have sex with his wife. Man, I tell you what, and I'm say. gonna watch. So as a legend, oh, the, shit. there he is. Looks like a buddy of mine, actually. Man. 
<laughs> oh, man, look at that I face. I feel bad for him. He's like looking right into my soul. Mm. He looks like he looks like a walrus and a pug had sex. <laughs> he looks like <laughs> Ted Cruz. Man, but that that's kind of fucked up that one, your husband doesn't want to fuck you. Two, a day laborer who, you know, it's the ultimate ar- uh, in arousal is, yeah, well, is cuckolding, bro. Well, well, it's one of those things you where it's like, you know, these guys that uh, hang out in front of the Home Depot, like they'll do any job. You know, they just want to get paid. You know, they're just trying to make some money. But they won't go to the extreme of, I ain't going to fuck. I, I ain't going to touch you, girl. Get the hell. I'd rather die yeah, than look, have sex with you. <laughs> yeah. Look, look up at her. Would you, uh, would you slam it or would you pound it? Slam it or can it? I would can it. Yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Aguero. Aguero. You're just not my type. Aguero. Berriera Valisbella. Well, eh, bottom line is, is that the guy said he's going to do it. And he like see, he scooted off when he wasn't looking and never came back. Maybe they had some sort of arrangement where you're supposed to come back the next day. Later that after, let's just read a little bit more of it. Uh, before allowing the man to leave the residence, the couple took his Mexican visa and driver's license. Oh, so he knew oh, that they would no. return the next day. If he did not show up the following morning, the couple warned they would send explicit photos to his wife in Mexico. Uh, they told him they would get Viagra for him the next day. Oh, so that he can do it. He couldn't, he couldn't get it up. Ugh, gross. Murrieta, Venezuela then drove the victim back to the Home Depot in Phoenix where he had been picked up later that afternoon. Murrieta, Venezuela, just call him MV for now. MV. Uh, contacted, uh, actually Chapete, <laughs> Venice Chapete, contacted the victim and told him to return to the house immediately, warning that if he did not come back, quote, to have sex again, that he would send the pics to his wife, blah, we said that already, um, through the WhatsApp message app. The photos were forwarded to the day laborer's spouse. If you didn't do it, um, after being contacted by the victim, cops subsequently executed a search warrant. So he just went to the cops and said, hey, this guy's got my shit, and he says he wants me to fuck his wife, dude. Damn, I mean, if I'm lying, then you are not. Then you can arrest me, but you can go over there right now. If you go over there, you'll <laughs> see him, and he got my license. And he got my money. You got to do that more Mexican sounding. And he got my money. And he got my money. My money. Anyways, that's the story there, man. Uh, uh, let's see. Acuna Aguero and Murrieta Venezuela have been a- charged with Acuna sexual. Matata. Acuna Matata. <laughs> have been charged with sexual assault, aggravated assault, and unlawful recording of a person. They are each locked up in a lien of uh, $2,500,000. So, Jesus Murphy. Did that guy get deported or? Uh, well, he had, I guess he had papers. Oh, he so had papers? Yeah, Sweet. he was a day liver. Damn, man, that sucks. Is that what your mind went there? Shout, shout out to the homies at Home Depot who may be getting sexually assaulted and don't speak up. All right. But, you know, believe all women. Here's another right? story here. <laughs> so, a German Nazi camp guard, and this comes from Thompson Reuters Foundation News, news.trust.org. I, I believe this. A uh, Nazi German camp guard, 92, charged as accessory to thousands of murders. Fucking great. Jeez. I'm 92? so happy about this. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's still a threat to many people out there, so they had to lock him up. Berlin, April 18th. German prosecutors have charged a 92-year-old former concentration camp guard with being an accessory to murder in what would be one of the last ever cases against Nazi-era war crimes. We won, we beat them, fucked them up. <laughs> Hamburg prosecutors accused, them, uh, accused the man identified only as Bruno D. of aiding and abetting Five of uh, five thousand two hundred thirty cases of murder during the almost nine months Damn. he spent on duty at a concentration camp watchtower at the end of World War II. According to Diewald newspaper, which first reported the charges, the man admitted to the prosecutors during a voluntary interrogation last year that he had seen people being taken to gas chambers to be murdered. Quote: Why? Uh, what good would it have done for me to leave? They just would have found someone else. You should have told that in prosecutors. A stronger German accent. What good would it have done to, for me to leave? <laughs> it got Italian there. <laughs> they, just like a, <laughs> they just found somebody else. He told the prosecutors, uh, according to the newspaper, I felt bad for the people there. I did not know. That sucked. I didn't know why they were left there. I knew that they were Jews who had committed no crime. Damn. So he just sort of says, yeah, these uh, they were Jews and I was part of it and all right. He was 17 at the time. It goes on. 
He said he had not been a Nazi sympathizer. Um, uh, another Oscar groaning known as the bookkeeper of Auschwitz for his job counting cash stolen from people sent to the most notorious of all the... Yeah, great. That's fucking great. Uh, I'm glad to God they put the old man away because he's, you know, he's a dick and he probably wanted to go and he, yeah. his, his guilty conscience would want him to be there. See, and those are the, you know, those are the kind of people that we should be going after. People who actually did horrible things like that. Yeah. Not just, not saying, oh, Trump is Hitler. Well, why? Meanwhile, you've got Soros who admitted going to fucking door to door with his uncle or whatever. That yeah. was a Nazi guard and rounding up fucking Jews. And he's like, do you regret it? He goes, no, you know, it was a good time. <laughs> fucking A. Rounding up the Jews. Can we, uh, can we charge him as being an accessory to yeah, all those he, crimes? He should be well? the last. I mean, he admitted on camera. Damn, man. All right, it's moving on. Uh, Newsbusters, this is a great one here. The Mueller report comes out. We didn't, we're not going to talk about the Mueller report because we were right all along, but they're still looking for, the, there were, you know, signs of obstruction. Yeah, he, he was trying to say, uh, yeah, fire him, but didn't get fired. He didn't no. fire him, so kind of saved his ass on that one. But yeah, there's intention for uh, obstruction, but mm -hmm. no actual obstruction. None at all. And their argument is that, well, why don't, like, don't you think if you're about to commit a crime that you should go to jail for that? And I go, yeah, but he's yeah. not committing any sort of crime. He has le he can legally fire Mueller if he wanted to. He could do whatever he wants, <laughs> kind of. Well, yeah, he can't really do that. But anyways, the left goes crazy and right just goes, we were right this whole time, guys. They wanted to take it easy. But now they think what Mueller has put on there, Mueller has put on there, that it's, it's, it's ready for impeach uh, in impeachment. Yeah. We have enough to impeach. And it was said so many goddamn times in one day that the wonderful newsbusters.org website. 363 times? Somebody's somebody's is, is sitting there and recording it every time. And I, I, I thank you for the guy who's doing that. Getting, yeah. Probably get paid to do it. Thank That's you. why I don't do it. But go down and uh, get to this video here. And we're just going to play it for you. It's from news. They can impeach the president. And one of those crimes that they, he could potentially be impeached for would could potentially, if, if there was evidence. Uh, do you evidence. think the Judiciary Committee should start impeachment hearings? Do you, do you think they're going to move ahead with impeachment? Should we impeach? The Mueller report could be a roadmap. A roadmap. A roadmap. A roadmap. A roadmap. A 10 episode roadmap for, for impeachment. impeachment. Perhaps there's enough evidence <laughs> here to start impeachment proceedings. Impeachment proceedings. Immediate impeachment proceedings. Start impeachment proceedings. Impeachment for impeachment. Impeachment. impeachment proceedings should be impeached too, yeah. impeaching the sensitive issue oh, of impeachment man, impeachment proceedings face. impeachment but impeachment with impeachment issue of impeachment and if they begin impeachment he can be impeached impeachment it's impeach or not impeached In terms of impeachment and then there's impeachment talking about impeachment right. perhaps of impeachment on the impeachment question a conversation about impeachment impeachable impeachability potentially impeachable things it's sort of impeachable looking the thing that provided the predicate for impeachment they're deranged people man what and it, and it's cuz nobody calls them on their shit like no, like you know and then the people who do are on the right and then it's like well you're just attacking us cuz you know for whatever reason and it's like no you guys are wrong just admit that you're wrong well there are there is somebody that seems to be level-headed mm -hmm. on CNN, and it's uh, Chris, I don't know how to pronounce this, Siliza, Chiliza? Siliza? Siliza, whatever, Chris, we'll just call him Chris Sill. Yeah. Chris Sill, my S man. Silly Chris. Silly Chris, and his column at CNN website is called The Point, mm. but it takes him many, many words and paragraphs to finally get to the to point get buried to the deep point. in his verbose <laughs> musings about the Mueller report. Uh, before we get to the conclusion that threatens the blah, 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 I don't want to read all this shit. He just talks about um, um, how he feels about the obstruction. Just get to the point, Chris. Bottom line is uh, he'll say something. Uh, the exec Although the investigation established that the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure that outcome, and the campaign expected it would benefit electorally from uh, information stolen and released through Russian efforts. Uh, that's what it's trying to say there. I'm skipping around here. So why not charge? Um, he gets, we got two top line conclusions. Neither Trump nor anyone in his campaign conspired with the Russian government uh, in the 2016 election, and two, Trump will not be charged. Those are the two things you know, mm -hmm. and that's what it should be. You know, uh, There's no more going into it and trying to find more and more, because that's what they wanted. They're gonna go get Mueller up, um, and he said, you know, Mueller reports very good news for Trump, and that's someone at CNN probably was a 
uh, Republican contributor anyway, so who knows. Last story of the night, you guys. A militia group detained migrants at the border and got their leader arrested. Yeah. Uh, their leader got arrested. This is from CNN News. Where, see, I get a lot of news from CNN. Uh, CNN. They've been keeping watch near the border for weeks, drawing little notice as they shared live videos from their desert outpost. But after posting videos last week and showing armed men wearing military fatigues detaining migrants who just crossed the border into New Mexico, a militia group known as the United Constitutional Patriots now finds itself under fire. Dun, dun, dun. State authorities in New Mexico have condemned the group. The American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, the, uh, accuses the militia of kidnapping migrants. But the, the mm. cops aren't, so weird. And now the leader of the group is facing charges of illegal weapons and ammunition position brought on by the FBI. Well, there it is, actually. Uh, what's that loud? I think it's what it's for this guy. Members of the United Constitutional Patriots haven't responded to CNN's request at the moment. Uh, I wonder why. They, uh, but here's what we know so far about the group based on what authorities are saying, social media posts, and local media reports, and speculation. All right, that last part is in there, but you've got to agree that it's probably going on. <laughs> the group has a following Facebook, uh, a growing Facebook following but a small number of members camping near the border. So it's just some guys, 20 members. They're armed with AK-47s, the affidavit says. And they're just hanging out there, and they're supporting the border guards. That's what they're trying to say. And the border, they're trying to say the border guards don't like this, which I'm sure they, they're not a big fan, but what they're doing is they're, giving, they're stalling those people yeah. enough, and they've captured, uh, not captured, but... See, when they say they've been captured, it doesn't say that they were actually... Uh, you know, keeping them, mm -hmm. they were just holding them what, under what they called citizens' arrest until until the cops, the cops come and then they're released to the cops. It's like, okay, I get it. These guys are putting the law into their. They're not really putting the law into. This is what you can do as an American. As an American citizen, you can, if you yeah. see if you see crime, you can stop it under. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, under citizens' arrest, you can do that. When I was a, um, uh, sh granted, you should have some sort of training or something, but I was a security guard for Target in my life. And they showed you that kind of thing. Mm. Um, you can detain them, and that's why we can put them in handcuffs. Not because uh, you know we wore a badge, but because we were trained and we, kn we knew the law. Yeah. The law is you can handcuff somebody, especially if they're doing breaking the law, and you can prove it mm -hmm. with video, which is what we always had. If you can prove it, you can arrest them. So what they do is they have their cameras there. They're watching it. They see it happen. Okay, we go into action. We hold these cats until they're ready to go. Um, and that's it. The cops come, and that's, that's all there is to it. And it's drawing widespread attention last week after posting videos of migrants detained at gunpoint. You see that, and they're putting up their guns because that's what's going to stop them. And yep. they're probably legal to have them, but there's probably a couple of these, you know, maybe one or two psychos <laughs> that are um, got maybe too many guns. They don't need it. We c and s the ACLU accused them of kidnapping. A group Come spokesperson on. said if they were making uh, that they were making citizens' arrests, as I said. And they say this, we cannot allow racist and armed vigilantes to kidnap and detain people seeking asylum. Okay, can we just uh, allow just armed vigilantes? We'll get rid of the racist ones. We cannot allow <laughs> racist and armed. Do we, does that mean there's two of them? Yeah. Or can we just pick one of them? Armed vigilantes to kidnap and detain people seeking asylum, said the ACLU of New Mexico. Uh, we urge you to immediately investigate this atrocious and unlawful conduct. Well, see, and that's in my head, I look at that and it's like they're doing something that we are kind of called to do as American citizens. We're called to protect our country. Well, would you think this would have the same sort of ring if they said we cannot allow armed vigilantes to kidnap and detain people seeking asylum? Or is it sound worse no. when we go, we cannot allow racist and fucked up people to kidnap? You know, they have to put yeah, in when, their own little spin. Racist goes. When you throw racist in there, it's like, oh, well, they're doing it because they're racist, not because they care about the country, but because they're just we'll racist. Up, we'll put up all the all the proud American Mexicans. Yes. And we'll put them at the border and let's Dude. see them try to say that to us now. Yeah. Fuckers. Well, well, and and that's the other part where it's kind of like they just, don't exist. Just because, I mean, maybe some people in this militia are like of colored descent. You don't know that. Like, they're, they, they don't let anything be known other than just saying that they're racist. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what they want to try to keep out of CNN. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see that on CNN. Oh, no, no. You'll see it on Fox News. You'll see it on any other great source for news. Um, not that Fox is the greatest <laughs> source for yeah. news, but they have been really right about a lot of things lately. And I'm kind of keeping that, that train rolling. I'm talking <clears throat> Russian investigation. They were right. Um, the New York Times reported that 
Ben V, the militia's group spokesman, said their actions were illegal. Quote, comparing the detention to migrants to a verbal citizen's arrest. They are, yeah, they are comparing the detention of migrants to a verbal citizen, uh, citizen's arrest. But that's what it is. It is a, ver isn't it a, it's a detention? To, oh, anyways, the New Mexico's governor said state and local authorities were looking into the matter. New York Times reported, okay, I was just reading that weird. Looking into the yeah. matter. Uh, but see, and, and then also the other thing, like, I feel like things like that, when I, I like so i don't see this this being a race a racial thing but i feel once it gets reported as a racial thing then that turns up the heat of racism in the country because then mexicans feel like oh like there's a bunch of these white people out there who are racist how do i know that every white person i meet isn't a racist and then the same thing with the white people to mexicans and now we're both front on high alert where we shouldn't be because yeah. this isn't a racial thing this is just people doing what americans do absolutely absolutely man well, any last uh, thoughts? Any last thing you want to say? Where can we follow all your stuff, David? Uh, of course, my YouTube, uh, The Holy Hispanic. Holy Hispanic. Um, and uh, check, follow him at ostentatious yes. underscore 512. That's right, ostentatious. That's right. That's on the YouTube. I mean, on the Twitter and Instagram. Twitter, Instagram. Follow me at Fast Right Loats on Twitter. And don't forget to listen to right. Emergency Exit. We will be back. Thank you. This is this is what democracy looks like this podcast. Is what it looks like. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just how we roll. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. When this thugs is cry. When <laughs> thugs cry. <laughs> when dams cry. Take care now. Uh, that's right. Hit, hit it on the ones and twos.